So hello everyone, a very, very good morning to all of you in the Daily Transform session and I'm Dr. Sumer. It is such a pleasure to be with all of you in the morning at 10 a.m. So before we start this session today, I think one of our students today in the chat box is celebrating her birthday. So Dr. Jansi Jagadishan, a very, very happy birthday from my side and Dr. Deepi's side. We wish you all the best for your future and uh, you know, it is such a pleasure to be back and, you know, I was in Hyderabad for a class yesterday and day before, so I could not join you, but uh, in spirit, I was always with you. And it was such an interesting time that I had with the NAMS Hyderabad students. It was very, very, it was such a pleasure to meet all of them in, you know, person. So today, I have an idea. Today I have an idea and I want you all to tell me that what is the most common disease that you might get as a question in your exams or as a patient in India? What is the most common disease that you might get as a patient in your practice? Or what is the most common question that you might get in your exams? So one of the dictums that I always tell in all my classes is common things are commonly asked. And what is more common than tuberculosis in India? TB is very common in India. So I thought today I'll show you and I'll discuss with you an art of teaching which is called as which is called as storytelling and we will try to build a story together. This story will be written by you and me together and probably you know we'll try to create a video together. So now the story begins with a bacteria called as mycobacterium tuberculosis. How will this bacteria enter our body? What will be the portal? Where will he enter? Uh, when, where will this organism enter our body from? It will start, the disease will start in the lungs. So inhalation, you inhale aerosols and you know, you inhale the bacteria and it goes into the lungs. So the beginning will be in the lungs. So when you're first time exposed to this disease, let us now look at the story now. You don't know this uh, gentleman who has entered our body. We don't know. Okay. Now, can you tell me, what will you call this kind of infection? That is called as the primary exposure. Primary exposure. So in the primary exposure, what will happen is the macrophages will try to eat this bacteria, but they will try to eat, but they cannot kill it. They'll try to eat this bacteria and you know, you will see a focal area of consolidation. Then there will be enlarged lymphatics and an enlarged lymph node. Can you tell me from the story that I have built up so far, what is this complex called as? We see this in primary TB, anyone? So this is a very classic radiology question. You is called as Gohn's complex. Gohn's complex, and then you know ultimately in most people the primary TB would heal and it will get calcified and a scar of the first battle will remain. So we are in the story. A attack has happened on our body with tuberculosis, and you calcify the Gohn's complex, and but that calcified that spot of the previous battle will remain. That is called as anyone. Anyone? So that scar of the first battle, first battle of Panipat, the first primary infection is still left. Can you tell me now? That is called as Rankase complex. That is called as Rankase complex. Very good. But then, you know, what might happen? This is the primary infection. That what might happen later on, you know, you may have a reinfection in life, uh, you know, or you may have a you may have a reactivation of disease if your immune status is falling somehow. You may have a reactivation of disease. That is called as the reactivation or reinfection tuberculosis. Now the infection has to go. Now this uh, the attack is happening for the second time. Now the bacteria knows the way around our body. This bacteria knows ke ye jo attack ho he, he knows where to go in the body. He will try to go in the lung in the areas where the oxygen extraction is maximum, where the ventilation perfusion ratio is maximum. Can you guess and tell me in the comments? Where will, where will, where will you see the secondary infection? Where would you see that? Now we know because if first time when the attack happened, they did not know the way around. Now they know the way around. It has to go to the apex, go to the apex. So that is the second question. But now we also know this is an enemy. We also know that this is an enemy. Now what will happen? Anyone? We will launch an immune response surrounding it. Immune response is like a missile. So we will launch an immune response against the bacteria in the apex and I am sure you can tell me now, listen to me, that now what will happen is the attack that will happen from our side, the missile, will form a ring-like area of inflammation surrounding it. 
there will be a ring like area of inflammation surrounding the bacteria in the apex are you clear so there will be this ring like soft tissue visible and the center will be destroyed because inflammation is a destructive force so what would you see you will see a ring like area with a thick wall what that is called as cavitation that is called as cavitation so you will see in the secondary tb cavitation are you clear with this well done now these cavities are you know inflamed areas and sometimes this inflammation can erode into the bronchus and the bacteria can then enter the bronchial tree that is called as the bronchogenic spread of tuberculosis and that is a previous question as well i'm sure many of you can tell me what would you see on a ct scan if you have a bronchogenic spread now this bacteria is spreading through the bronchus so you will see the nodules in a branching pattern around the bronchial tree they will be called as tree in bud appearance tree in bud appearance sometimes the tubercular focus might rupture into a blood vessel and the tb will spread hematogenously to both the lungs that is called as miliary appearance that is called as miliary appearance and then i am sure you know many of you can answer that tb can not only restrict to the lungs it can spread to the other body parts also the bacteria will now if the bacteria is in the blood stream it can go into the liver you can have the granuloma granulomas in the liver granulomas in the spleen and any other organ also where you have more blood flow high high vascular organs would you know tend to uh, take up the uh, bacteria because it is spreading via the blood so let us think about brain brain has high vascularity it can go to the brain then if you a tubercular bacilli go to the brain you will have ring like inflammation surrounding them and because this inflammation is sticky you will form conglomerate ring lesions in the brain called as tuberculomas tuberculomas the center will be necrotic ring like lesions some of those tubercular lesions in the brain can reach up to the subpile surface so when they reach up to the meningeal surface they might rupture into the meninges these are called as the rix foci and you develop tubercular meningitis tubercular meningitis and the hallmark of tubercular meningitis in radiology will be basal exudates basal exudates so 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 far we have seen tb in the lungs primary secondary bronchogenic spread miliary spread and we have seen how it goes into the brain now another thing that can happen is that when the tb is in the lungs the blood vessels you know surrounding it would enlarge and you know sometimes because of the inflammation a bronchial artery may rupture leading to hemoptysis rarely you may have a pulmonary artery in a tubercular cavity and get, that can get inflamed and dilated that is called as rasmussen's aneurysm so source of hemoptysis is usually bronchial rarely it can be pulmonary artery if it is a rasmussen's aneurysm so keep this in mind now we are changing the body part tb can go into the kidney hematogenously the tb goes into the kidney and it goes into the vascular part of the kidney then you know it can you know cause chronic inflammation ultimately due to chronic inflammation the kidney will be contracted and calcified contracted and calcified what do we call that kidney that is called as the putti kidney that is called as the putti kidney or the cement kidney then tb can trickle down from the kidneys into the ureters the ureters can become beaded sore tooth because it's a chronic inflammatory process it can lead to fibrosis and strictures and then it can also cause scarring of the ureterovesical junction which on cystoscopy looks like a golf hole appearance then ultimately the bladder will become <coughs> fibrosed and contracted that is called as thimble bladder that is called as thimble bladder so you know we, we went to liver spleen kidney brain what else where else it, it can go to the genital tract you can have if you remember in the genital tract if you have tb in the females it can lead to infertility fallopian tube blockage beaded appearance of the tube golf club appearance tobacco pouch appearance because of the strictures it's a chronic inflammatory process and not only that it is one of the important questions that you expect in your exams also tb is one of the important causes of infertility and it can also then go secondarily it can go into the endometrium also but most commonly you will you know see it in the fallopian tube it can not only go into the kidney it can also go to the adrenals and if you remember tuberculosis is one of the causes of adrenal insufficiency it can affect the adrenal adrenals can become calcified it can go to the heart and the pericardium 
if the pericardium is involved with chronic inflammation it will be fibrosed calcified and you will have tubercular constrictive pericarditis tubercular constrictive pericarditis so you know you can see now what i am trying to do is i am trying to weave the infection around and now you are having the tuberculosis in the lungs you are you know coughing sometimes you may ingest the sputum and the tubercular bacilli go into the gi tract and through the gi tract you know at the ileocecal area there is some stasis there is some slow flow of the food that is happening so the bacteria are there more likely to invade plus you have the lymphatics in the terminal ileum you know the pears patches and you tend to develop ileocecal chronic inflammation ileocecal inflammation can lead to contracted cecum pulled up cecum ileal structure and a deformed ileocecal wall which is called as the inverted umbrella sign so this is you know i have tried my best to weave it for you how the bacteria enters the bacteria is an attack the, this infection is an attack on our body it is trying to attack trying to spread in our body we are trying to prevent it it is difficult to kill bacteria so that is why it is leading to chronic inflammation everywhere so the hallmark would always be fibrosis 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 the kidney will be contracted cecum will be contracted ileum will be contracted fallopian tube will be contracted the ureters will be contracted and that is why once you understand it you will always get it right so you know that was my idea <laughs> that was my idea and you know it was it came up when i was uh, teaching in a recent class and during the class i got an idea that why not you know summarize everything in 5 minutes i took 10 minutes but i hope the story gives you an idea that if we start imagining things in how and why they are happening it makes learning fun it makes learning easy and you are always able to remember I, you know the problem that is happening is most people are reading about bowel tb in a separate subject and kidney tb in a separate subject brain tb in a separate subject microbiology of the bacteria in a separate subject pulmonary tb in a separate class and you are not able to see it's the same organism and the same infection that is affecting the body and my request to all of you is we have to fall in love with medicine it is very important that if we you know nobody knows what is the purpose of life nobody knows what is the purpose of life but all i know is you need to find something that excites you that makes you feel alive and then you make it your mission you need to find something that excites you that makes you feel alive and then you go ahead and make it your life story do you agree or not that oh maza nahi hai zindagi ke andar if i am not enjoying what i am doing and for me you know you know i have a Uh, tedx talk scheduled on sunday in aims kalyani i am going there to talk about my journey as a teacher and as in a tedx talk this is my fourth tedx talk and um, all i today when i look back all i know is that you know you have to feel alive in every fucking moment of your life you cannot let it off nahi to na maza nahi aa raha you know agree or not so i my request today is let us bring the interest let us bring the passion let us bring the al- alive feeling to the medicine instead of that negativity that we see around cut the negative let's bring the positive back and let's enjoy the learning and i hope you know i am sure you should get some mcqs from today's video in the neat pg exam in your fmg exam if you get them do let me know in the comments please come back to this video after the exam also i wish you all the best keep rocking keep transforming have a great day ahead and we'll again join you on monday again i wish you all the best god bless you beta